Hey friends, welcome to Spirit Connection. Doug Addison here, May 1st, 2019. And I'm excited to bring you a prophetic word that's for not just the month of May, but that actually is going to go on beyond that. But there's something that you can apply to your life right now. You're going to see some changes happen. I've got an activation prayer for you that's going to open the heavens over you. And then don't go away at the end. We're doing the Q&A. And also, I've got an exciting new free offer for you. I'll be talking about it at the end. It's going gonna, it's gonna to shift things over your finances and even other areas of your life. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. And we thank you that your Holy Spirit is moving right now, even beyond the Internet. Where the Lord wants to touch so many people right now through uh, the Internet. But the enemy has been hitting so hard, trying to get you to back down. I just say, don't back down. And no matter when you watch this, God is outside of time. So you can grab hold of this prophetic word that's being released and uh, you can take it into your life by faith. Lord, we release this over people, the power that's coming right now through the Holy Spirit from heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, DougAddison.com is my website. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, The Doug Addison. Also, Instagram and Twitter, Doug T. Addison, that's my middle initial, uh, and also uh, my daily prophetic words, hashtag daily prophetic, or get them delivered to your email address or inbox, that's what I do, it's easy, uh, and just go to my website and click on the daily prophetic, or we have another way right now, we have the new free Doug Addison app that you can get uh you can get all my stuff delivered. I call it the negative free zone. You won't find any negativity here. If you're going, if you're going for the negative free fast that I've been talking about, download my app at the Apple App Store or the Google Play for Android or Apple smartphones. And you could get the daily prophetic delivered, my videos, my blogs and teachings. Uh, just want to encourage you right now that God's moving outside of time. He's moving right now. And this is a time to press in. You're going to see some changes happen. I heard the Lord say this in Hebrews 10, 36 and 37. You need to persevere so that when you've done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. And for in a little while, he who is coming will come without delay. That's the word I got right at Passover and, and at um, the Easter uh, or uh, Resurrection Weekend, whatever you want to call it. I just covered about everything for that weekend. Uh, but it doesn't matter what you call it. What matters is what the Lord's doing in your life. And I got these prophetic words right around that time. The Lord says, your time of waiting is now coming to an end. And even though it's been a difficult time, to persevere through the storms that have been against you. And I'm the Lord said, I'm coming to you and I'm going to do this without delay. Answers to prayers that have been backlogged. Your book of purpose is now being opened and you're going to get deeper understanding on what's ahead and no more delay starting in May. It's what the Lord said. Now note, uh, note to people, this is not the second coming of Christ. This is actually a move of God that's happening in our lives right now to set us up for one of the greatest revivals in history. And watch for the Lord to reveal things to you. Sources of the attacks of the enemy and things that have been hidden are now being revealed. I know it's happening with myself and my In Light Connection team. Uh, we are finding things right now, praying and pressing through. I'm going to give you some prayers in just a little bit, we've been praying and pressing through and the enemy is being revealed and his plans, especially during this season, which, you know, we just went through uh, with Resurrection Sunday and Passover overlapping right at the same time. That was powerful. Now, I want to let you know uh, about some Passover encounters I had that was, it started April 19th, 2019, and it ended April 27th, eight days of goodness. I normally get more revelation during Passover than any other time of the year. Now, 
a lot of prophets or you don't have to be a prophet to receive revelation. But we get it a lot of times during the Jewish holidays called Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, which is uh, September, October, depending on when they fall. But I get encounters with the Lord during Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And at Passover, I get strategies. And this is because Passover is when God gave Moses the strategy to get the Israelites set free from 400 years of captivity under Egypt. And Moses was given this prophetic download that would allow the spirit of death to pass over their houses. And they had to do some things. So this is the same today. You can get these types of things. And I tell you, whether you know it or not, I saw them being released from heaven. There's scrolls and strategies. You don't have to see them. You don't have to be a seer or a prophet. They just happen. You just receive it by faith and you're going to see something change here very shortly. And so this year, at the start of Passover, I got had several encounters. Actually, two days before is when it started. And it went on, boy, all the way through to the end. Uh, I was given a scroll of the plans of the Lord. I was taken into a heavenly encounter. And this year, I, actually, I would call this, uh, it, my at time during Passover, it was full of the books of heaven and battles on earth. I saw several books and scrolls from heaven opening and releasing detailed plans for us. I saw these things. I saw them over cities. I saw them over churches and businesses, over individuals and families. Boy, I tell you, then, my goodness, there was a battle to obtain it. But you know what? That's part of it. That's really part of what the Lord does. He'll release his strategy. The enemy doesn't want you to have it, but just press in to it. Now, the first day, uh, I think it might have been, it was the first day of Passover. I was in this heavenly encounter, and on the table before me, the Lord showed me a scroll that said the plans of the Holy One. It was Isaiah 519, the plan of the Holy One of Israel. Let it approach. Let it come into view so that we may now know it. Hey, you need a good verse to, to pray and decree. Isaiah 519 is the season to pray and decree. The plan of the Holy One of Israel. Let it approach. Let it come into view so that we may know it. Now, I had this encounter during the start of Passover, and the plans of the Lord began to open. And, and as I opened this, is in a spiritual experience, kind of like a dream, but I was awake. It was in a spiritual experience when I opened it. It was a sound of weeping. And the weeping was so powerful. It went on for a while, and it opened things in the spiritual realm. And the Lord said that there's going to be a powerful weapon of weeping being released. Now, this happened at the start of Passover, right? And I, I went to uh, a uh, Passover conference where I was speaking and in Apopka, Florida. And I saw it take place. You know, I was trying to open the heavens and each place takes a different thing. And, and it wasn't until I, people began to weep with the Lord. It's called travail. And my goodness, it opened the heavens. And there's a powerful weapon in this season right now with weeping. Two things are going to happen right now. Those who have been weeping for a long time because of sorrow and grief, you're about to be comforted. The Lord's going to move right now and comfort those. Luke 6, 21, Jesus said, Blessed are those who weep, for you will now laugh. How good is that? So in other words, there's a change in the season for those who have been weeping and crying out to the Lord. You're about to receive the joy and laughter in the spirit. It's going to shift the spiritual atmosphere over you. Watch for that to happen. Then those who have not wept or have been in a season of dryness, uh, maybe you don't have a uh, ability uh, to, to laugh, there's going to be, I tell you, some crying from heaven. The Holy Spirit's going to release it. That's going to open things up. So it's an interesting time. Laughing and crying in the Holy Spirit is being released right now. It's starting now. It started last week and during the Passover season and, and Resurrection Sunday. There's something new about to release in the power of your tears. 
the power and your laughter. And I, you know, I go back and forth between the two. Psalm 56 verses 8 and 9. There is power in your tears. Record my misery, list my tears on your scroll. See, here we go. There's the scroll of heaven. Are they not in your record? Then my enemies will turn back uh, as I call for help. And by this, they will know that God is with me. The Lord is releasing a special power right now that's going to flow through your weeping and it's going to cause spiritual warfare. Did you read that? The Psalm 56, I tell you, get this down, verses 8 and 9. Write this down, begin to pray it, because our enemies, I tell you, your enemies will turn back. There's going to be a shifting happen. God has recorded your prayers. He's uh, your weeping, your tears, and the scrolls. You'll see it right there. That's what I'm talking about. The scrolls in heaven are now being released and this special power is going to flow through both weeping and laughing depending on your season. I've seen it more in weeping but many people who've already been weeping say I can't weep anymore. You're going to laugh. But listen, I also had another encounter in which uh, I opened my Bible and it was Revelation 5 verse 4. This is when John in the book of Revelation he's seeing the Lord and he's seeing the book of the Lamb that had seven seals. And he said, read this here, watch this. He said, I wept and I wept because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or look inside. He wept and he wept. And his tears, he didn't open the scroll, but it gave the answer. And this is what we're talking about. The answer was the angels said, hey, don't weep because the Lamb who was slain, he's worthy to open the scroll, but it took weeping to get that answer. So your next steps for your life, it, they are already being released from heaven. And it will require weeping to break off things like, like pride that maybe have blinded people. Many people are suffering from this, or maybe it's gonna be laughing to break off depression. Whatever it is, I release this right now. I release the Holy Spirit laughter that is needed, or I release right now the Holy Spirit weeping and travail where it is needed. And oh boy, I tell you, I, I live this word out today at a meeting with my team, and I live this prophetic word out today, and we needed an answer from the Lord, and I ended up weeping uh, uh, in front of everybody, a bit embarrassing, but it opened the heavens and we were able to get the breakthrough. And then you might say, well, then I'm not a weeper. Well, they'd laugh if you're not a weeper. I'm going to show you if you're not a weeper. Actually, I hadn't wept in a while and I'm a sensitive seer. I, I sensitive to the heart of God. And, and uh, so you maybe have a different personality style, but it doesn't matter. God wants to release the plans of the Lord, the plans from heaven, this is what's powerful about Passover and uh, Resurrection Sunday. Now we're between, uh, we are between Resurrection Sunday, which happened at Passover, by the way. You know, when Jesus, that's why it's so powerful. Jesus himself was crucified during Passover. He took the Passover meal. He took the, and, uh, and it was during this time between this time and the 50 days to, to the, to this festival of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came, this was the time to get the strategies of the Lord. This was the time to get the shift that's going to happen to you. Now, here's the answer. If you feel like you haven't wept or you can't weep, or maybe you're not hearing God, I'm going to release this over you. Now, I'm, I uh, go through these spiritual doors. I don't know if you've ever heard me talk about it, but in my prayer time every morning, I pray and I decree many different verses. Decreeing means you come into agreement, almost like a legal document. Whatever's written in here is a legal document uh, in heaven and on earth. And so what you bind on, on earth can be bound in heaven, and what you bind in heaven can be bound on earth. So that's what's saying is that it's powerful. Our prayers, and especially you combine them with the Word of God, it is so, so powerful. And so, 
I, I want to help you with this because I go through some doors, Revelation 3, 8 door, Revelation 3, 20, and the Revelation 4, 1 doors in my prayers. I'm going to walk you through it in just a minute here. I've been doing this for a couple of years now, and uh, you know, whether I hear or see anything or not, I just know it's by faith. If it's in the Bible, if it's in there, you can do it. And so I uh, was going through the door. This was right at, at the start of Passover. I was going through the Revelation 3, 8 door that no one can close. And I was walking through, and I was going, about to go through, and I just do this by faith, by the way. Uh, you know, it's not like I actually see the door or whatever. Sometimes I might, but I just do it by faith. And I'm, I'm worshiping, I'm in the Spirit, just like you. You can do this. And I was walking through the Revelation 3, 8, well, actually, Revelation 3, 7 and 8. These are the words of him who are holy and true, who holds the key of David. That's authority. That what he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I've placed before you a door that no one can shut. And I know that you have a little strength, but you've kept my word, and you have not denied my name. Powerful, powerful. So you take the key of David. That's your authority. We all have it. Whether you know it or not, you have authority through Christ. Take the key of David every day. Walk through the door. Uh, whether I'm sitting, doesn't matter. I'm positioned in Christ, right? We're all seated with Christ. Or I get up sometimes. I move around the room. I've got my playlist on. I'm worshiping the Lord. And I walked. I took the key of David by faith. And I walked through the Revelation 3, 8 door. I've been doing this every day. Then suddenly I was heading towards the Revelation 3, 20 door. That's where the Lord comes in and shares with you. And on the way, the Lord said, I want you to open this to Revelation 3.18 and look at this process. These things are, there's a process here. You know, some people get confused so they start looking at the book of Revelation or even the Bible and, wow, there's some weird stuff in there. But if you look at the process and think of it as types and signs, like the, the temple it's a shadow of things to come. You know, there's a lot of things. The Passover meal was a shadow of things to come. Well, I believe the book of Revelation is, you know, about the future as well. But there, it's also a shadow of things to come or a type. Uh, and a, a uh, it's something that you can learn from. And so if you look at the Revelation 3, 8 door and the process that John had to go through, to get the revelation for the book of Revelation. It's right there in Revelation chapter 3 and 4. And the Lord stopped me on right before Passover. Just a, it might have been a week before. I can't remember this part, but the timing. But he stopped me as I was walking through. And, and he said, look at this. Read it. Because I was reading it on my iPad. And he, I, lo I opened it up to Revelation 3.18. He said, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you can become rich and white clothes to wear so that you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so that you can see. Now I walked through the Revelation 3, 8 door and I was met by the Lord and an angel in a vision. And he said to me, you've been, not just me, this is for you too. You've been in a time of being refined by the fire. That's what these weather patterns are. That's what all the strange stuff that's going on. Right? That's what all these things are right now that's going on. It looks weird out there, uh, but we've been refined by the fire. And the Lord said, you need salve for your eyes. And so he hands me the salve in the spirit. I put it on my eyes and suddenly I could see. Suddenly. Everything seemed to get brighter and make sense. And then look at it. Revelation 3, 20 door. This is, you open your Bible to Revelation 3, 8, follow me. And you're going to see the Revelation 3, 20 door that I go through every single day. This is the one that you don't, you actually have to open this one. The others, the Lord opens these doors. But in Revelation 3, 20, we tend to think of this as salvation you know, which it is, but it's also written to the church. This is written to believers. It says, here I am, Jesus said. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and him with me. That's a meal with the Lord. 
So we get now, we've got the eyes salve on, we've got the key of David, we've walked through the Revelation 3, 8 door that no one can shut. We're now uh, in this place, uh, you know, we're going through the refiner's fire the season right now. Then I open this Revelation 3, 20 door every day to have a meal with the Lord. Now what that means, maybe it won't happen right there, but once I open it, I open that door in the Spirit, then he can come in and share. Whether it's right there or later on, maybe it's a dream. Maybe it'll be, suddenly it'll be a download. But this is the place that John actually had to walk through this process to get to the place. He had to get the salve on his eyes. He had to get the key of David in his hand. He had to walk through these things. Look at it. Open your Bible into Revelation 3. Look and see what happens. Revelation 4 is when the door in heaven opens. And after this, I looked and I saw before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had heard previously that sounded like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what is, uh, what will soon take place or what may take place after this. Wow, this is this Revelation 4, 1 door I go through every day. And this is the come up here door. In other words, you rise above your, certain, your current situation, whether you can see it or not, whether you're a prophet or a seer, you can do this because it's in the Bible. And you rise above your current situation and you, by faith, you rise up and come through this door in which there is things that God's going to now show you. And now look at Revelation chapter 4. What happens? Well, besides those weird uh, look at beasts around the throne. Don't, look, don't get hung up on all that. Look at Revelation 4, 8, Revelation 4, 11. Worship breaks out. And these, uh, the worship that's going on. So after I go through these doors, what do I do? I come into agreement with heaven by worshiping. Now, you don't necessarily have to say the same words. You could, but I start singing in the Spirit. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. You are worthy, O Lord, our God, to receive glory and honor and power. You created all things and by you all things were created. I sometimes sing that or I'll just come into agreement with anything because it's, hey, you don't have to be a seer. This is going on right now. That Revelation 4, one door is there and there's worship behind that door. And so you can come into agreement with it by doing it by faith. It's like anything. The more you do it, the more it's going to open up for you. Then at that point, I begin to decree and declare some verses. And now the two that I'm using right now, well, there's three actually. Uh, one of them is Jeremiah 11. I forgot the verse number, but it's that he was shown, Jeremiah was shown the plans of the enemy. So I say, Lord, show me the plans of the enemy. Right now, I decree right now, Daniel 2.22. He reveals deep and hidden things, and he knows what lies in darkness. And light dwells in him. That's a powerful win for these days because there's darkness everywhere. But the Lord knows what's going on, and light dwells in him. Colossians 1.26 is powerful. The mystery which has been hidden from ages... Uh, for ages and from generations, but now being revealed to you, his saints. This is the word of the Lord. This is Old Testament and New Testament combined. And we're now walking through that door, the Revelation 4. Let's just do this right now. Let's just go through the Revelation 3. Eight. Take the key of David right now. Walk through that Revelation 3, 8 door that no one can shut. This is your authority. You can do this in the Spirit. Now you come to the Revelation 3.18. The salve. Lord, give us the salve. Just put the salve on your eyes in the Spirit. Understand that you're in a refiner's fire time. It's okay. It, that The Lord knows this. He does this. He walks you through the, these things. And then now we say, Lord, we open the Revelation 3.20 door. Come in and have a meal with us. Eat with us. Eat with me, Lord. Give me revelation, deep revelation. Now, you can stay at any point, any of these, as long as you want. But now, 
the Revelation 4, 1 door. Come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. Go through that by faith. And then what happens? Wow, worship opens up. Lord, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. You can stay here and worship. At this point, I take some communion. I have uh, these communion cups I take with me. And uh, I take the communion at this point to come into agreement with, with heaven. And I've been doing this for a while. Then I begin to decree some verses uh, the ones I like, of course, the one I just told you, Daniel 2.22. I'm just going to say them right now. Lord, you reveal deep and hidden things, and you know what lies in darkness and light dwells in you. Lord, release the mysteries that have been hidden from ages and from generations, but now release to us, to his saints. Release that right now. Show us what the enemy doesn't want us to see in Jesus' name. Now. This is the powerful, powerful time. God is now going to open up to you. It's uh, Matthew 3, 13. Write this down. Matthew 3, 13. Enter through the narrow gate, right? We're going through these doors, right? This is the, the encounter that I had on Yom Kippur. It happened in September 2018. That's actually the Jewish uh, Rosh Hashanah. Uh, and Yom Kippur is the Jewish New Year and the Day of Atonement. I don't celebrate the Jewish holidays. I'm not, honestly, I don't. I just align myself with heaven because I know what happens. And at, you can go back and Google this or search my internet, search my website, or just put this in prophetic word, Ancient Paths in a Time of Transition, October 5th, 2018. It was the prophetic word I released, and it's the encounter that I had at Yom Kippur. Two days in a row, I had one, that was part one on one day, and it was a dream, and I was taken into the spiritual realm, and the second one was the next day. And the Lord said this. He said, I am now opening the ancient paths of revelation. This is the narrow gate. It, it's a road. Uh, it, it's just uh, the... The encounter I had, um, <clears throat> I posted it in October, but I had it in September. And this is the time right now, because I've been talking about going through these gates and doors, and, and the narrow gate happened at Yom Kippur. And here I am having another encounter about six months later or so uh, at Passover. The Lord said, I'm now opening that revelation, that's this ancient revelation that's been hidden. It's the stuff from Galatians 126, it's the mysteries that have been hidden away. And God is opening up right now. And if you find this gate, I tell you, you don't have to actually see it, but the Lord is walking you through. I want to tell you what is required for me to get this new revelation. I, if you read my prophetic word from October, you'll see I had to lay some things down. I had to lay down the way I was doing some things. The old way wouldn't work. In fact, in the, in the dream I had, the, the gateway, the door to walk through was only this big. It was, it was big enough for one person. Uh, we couldn't take our junk from the past. We couldn't take our teachings. I'm, I'm not saying that we're going to dismantle everything we believe at all. In no way we'll have the foundation of faith. But the Lord's saying there's ways that you might have to lay down some things of the past to walk through this and get ready right now. That the Lord's going to reveal deeper revelation to open it up to you. You don't need to be a prophet and a seer to, to see this. But he's doing something new right now. Now here's some new revelation. I just got when this was happening during this uh, last month and uh, during this, this season that we're in right now. I saw the Lord releasing a new seer anointing. And it's from uh, Luke 11.33. No one lights a lamp and puts it, uh, puts it uh, in a place where it is hidden. Instead, he puts it on a stand so that those who uh, will come will see the light. Your eye is the lamp of the body or the light of the body. And the body can be you or, your, or also symbolic of the church, the body of Christ. And the Lord said, I'm now raising up a new anointing. That's starting this month, right after Passover, right after, uh, right after Resurrection Sunday, they started to release this new 
light that's going to guide people in a dark. So it's, it's going to be also for believers who are in a dark time. So as a science prophet, I'm already operating in this new gift as a seer, in this new seer gift. And everywhere I go, I'm able to see the plans of the enemy. And I'm able to re release the plans of the Lord. The seer gift now is different than prophecy. And the, one of the places that I've seen is Isaiah 29.10, where the, uh, the, it says, The Lord brought you uh, a, a deep sleep, and he sealed the eyes of the prophets, and he covered the heads of the seers. This gives us an understanding of the prophetic gifts, prophets, tend to have the ability to see their spiritual eye, with their spiritual eyes and then speak it. But then the seers, notice it says the head of the seers. They have all the senses. They can hear, they can smell. We can sense, taste. We know things in the spirit. I'm a seer. Maybe you are too. Many people are. You don't have to be operating in, in the office or, or ministry of this to have these gifts. All my life, I've never been a knower more than anything. Maybe you know and you're knower. That might be a seer gift. And I'm just saying right now, the Lord is releasing this new gift. Uh, it might look strange, but the seer gift of, uh, of the eye, of the body. This is, uh, is the, um, the word that I had just said about Luke 11, 33, that the light is coming. We're going to see something amazing happen. The Lord is moving right now. And Lord, I pray that this seer gift, uh, that's what happened. I, I said seer and I thought it was Siri. And uh, my uh, cell phone activated at that point. It's going to look strange uh, to some people. Uh, here's an example. Now, I've, I'm, an, I'm a seer. I operate in that gift. Of course, I have a ministry and I'm in the office of a prophet. It's different, but this doesn't mean that you have to have this because God is going to do something right now with this new gift in everybody. You're going to see some level come. And here's an example of what God's been doing. And for me, just so you can see how it works, is Ezekiel 9-2. Then I saw six men coming from a direction of the upper gate and with face which faces north and each of them had a deadly weapon in their hands. So God opened this the Bible up and um, and he uh, it, this was something I suddenly started to see in a vision. And it was the context wasn't didn't matter in this case because it wasn't teaching. It was uh, it was the fact that I was at this place this is just a few weeks ago. I was at this place over a region and praying. And I asked the Lord, what's going on? I knew that there were some demonic forces there. And they showed me they saw six demonic forces, just like Ezekiel 9-2 from the direction of the upper gate. Notice the upper gate. That's representing a portal that's being closed off. And it didn't matter if it was facing north or not. What this is saying is I saw these six demonic forces blocking the upper gate or the portal over this area. And they all had a weapon in their hand. And one was attacking the prophets. I got another, the writers, another wealth, etc. So that's how the seer gift works. And right now, I'm going to release this over you. Lord, I release the seer gift by the power and blood of Jesus Christ. I release the seer gift over people. Uh, the, your word says the eye is the lamp of the body. And notice this is put on that eye salve because as you put on the eye salve, you're going to start seeing things in a new way. And as you do this, what happened to me right now, I want to tell you right when I want, I put on the seer, uh, the uh, I sav in the spirit, begin to worship the Lord, and He gave me a download. The, one of the clearest things I have uh, I've had in a very long time. He showed me. He even gave me in my spirit. I didn't hear an audible voice. I heard a name previously. That brought, in the same type of encounter, I heard a name of a realtor. I looked this person up, my goodness, there they are, a realtor right where I live in Los Angeles. Then I was given the coordinates and how to get an address of where the Lord's going to move. And I tell you, this is powerful. I don't usually get that type of thing. It was way different. 
And the Lord wants to give you revelation, whether it's like that or not. He wants to give you some revelation right now that's going to open the heavens over you. And there's going to, he's going to release to you some things. And as he's doing this, it's going to shift things around you and over you. And wow, Lord, I pray that right now. I pray for that new anointing. I pray for the new power that's coming in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Then I, I got this word as well. The Lord, uh, the Lord is raising up a new strategy to pray and intercede. I've been experiencing it. I've, you know, I've done some webinars about praying with the three court attacks and different things like that. But the Lord is doing something right now. And in the, I was uh, uh, in the spirit praying uh, just a few last week, actually. And the Lord released this. He said, he said, I am now taking the mantle of a fallen warrior, prayer warrior. And I'm bringing and breaking it up and, and releasing it in this church. And there are going to be uh, some prayers. Uh, some, uh, some of the prayers that God is going to release are actually unusual. But and we're going to have a time right now that uh, you know that you have to get the strategy. Like when I travel now, it's a strategy that's different for one city. Remember Jesus said this. He got a strategy. This one comes out with prayer and fasting. This one requires faith. This one is, rem is removed by unbelief. Watch the way Jesus prayed. It was different. Uh, and so this was with, with, with healing. It's the same with prayer. And we're about to see something change right now. He's going to give you wisdom. Because my prophetic word for the month of March was the spirit of wisdom is coming. The wind of change is here. And we're now going to see it affect us in this area of hearing God. I saw this mantle of a fallen prayer warrior uh, at, that had been called to raise up millions of people. It was a mandate for this person, but the enemy took him out uh, before this could take place, and his mantle fell to the ground. Really, no one has picked it up, and the Lord said this. He says, I'm now taking it. I'm not going to release it on one person. I'm releasing it to anyone who wants to pick it up, and he said this. I don't only want to raise up a million. He says, I want to raise up millions of prayer warriors. I heard the Lord say, if you raise up a thousand intercessors in your region or state, he will turn it into 10,000. And then he will take the 10,000s and turn it into a million. Now, I'm not good at math or anything, but I just know that a thousand is easier than a million. And it's there's going to be mandates being given to people now to raise up a thousand. I got one. I'm going to raise up a thousand intercessors. And each region, if you raise up a thousand in a state or a region, I don't know uh, what it might be, these prayer warriors, then God's going to turn it into millions all over the globe. And the Lord says, I'm going to be moving on the younger generation through these connections that are coming right now through this. And there's going to be prayer strategies on this. And this is also that seer gift is going to come in, come in place with this new uh, prophetic anointing, this new prayer uh, anointing as well. God's releasing something right now. Now, right at the end of Passover, I had an encounter with the Lord. And it's Daniel 6, 25 through 28. The ki then King Darius wrote to all the nations and all the people in every language on earth. He said, may you, may you prosper greatly. I give you, I issue a decree and so Daniel prospered during Darius's and um, the reign of Cyrus. Now, I took one thing out of there. I took one out just for simplicity. You can read the whole thing, but the context for the prophetic word right now, the Lord is issuing decrees from heaven. Deeds of prosperity, forms. Uh, it's, uh, there's things happening. I saw these declarations being given for prosperity, for the kingdom purposes, not personal purposes. Those who have held on to it for personal pur purposes have fallen away. Now, they've, they've not been able to maintain it in this new season. The Lord is issuing decrees right now of prosperity from heaven, and it's needed for the coming revival. Uh, God is doing something new right now, and He wants to help those in need because we have tragedies happening all over the world. There's losses but he's turning them around. Uh, maybe 
uh, maybe you've gotten a plan for this, uh, you know, that you've heard the Lord on it and you've gotten a plan previously, but you have not seen it. Joseph people, uh, the Joseph anointing started coming into the church a while back and it kind of tapered off. And I've been seeing people with that Joseph anointing. Genesis chapter 41, Joseph took the prophetic and released it and it really saved the entire world. And it was able to, uh, you know, set up a blessing and, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, taking the revelation and turning it into finances to save the world, to do things. That's the Joseph anointing. Many people, I've met them, uh, and they've come under extreme fire and attack. They've lost money because God is releasing something new right now. We're going to see this happen right now. Lord, we release this word as well. The entire prophetic word for the month of May, I release it over each person who has eyes to see and ears to hear. I pray, Father, for the spirit of wisdom to come, the spirit of understanding to come. I pray for the Joseph anointing people. They don't have to be a, a man. It's a woman too. That there's a turning around in financial situations. And it, just like what King Darius said to Daniel, may you prosper greatly in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, I'm excited about this prophetic word. And uh, I know that God's going to do something new in your life and, uh, oh my goodness, I, I can feel the presence right now. I still kind of lingering. I, uh, my uh, left hand uh, is, is kind of burning. So I just put this forward right now. All the attacks on your life be removed. I place my hand and the Spirit upon you. And no matter what your situation is, that you would have, these encounters will come to place uh, come to pass in your life in these prophetic words in Jesus name. Amen. All right. Well, DougAddison.com is my website and I uh, got some great news. We're going to, um, we're going to extend the seven remedies for spiritual identity theft on my workshop I did last month, but it was so powerful. My goodness. Uh, we're going to extend it. Um, the replay, you can still buy it until May 7th and that means that you got six more days uh, if you haven't gotten it. it six, uh, seven remedies for spiritual identity theft, seven plans of the enemy against you, and seven remedies as well. It's probably one of the more powerful ones I've done in a long time. But because, um, I, I just want to say this, is because there are so many people suffering under spiritual identity or identity theft. That's a, it's a prophetic word now. It's causing... It's prophetic of the identity crisis, but you can, I tell you, you can do this. Uh, just go dougaddison.com forward slash identity, or just go to my website. You'll see it there. And check this out. I'm releasing this new free training I've told you about at the beginning that maybe you're tired of having your finances or resources stolen, or maybe not uh, having the uh, all that you need to do. You know, uh, this is something God wants right now for everyone. And I'm not talking about a wealth and, and blessing prosperity message. I'm talking about having the money to do what God calls you to do when he calls you to do. It might not even be money. It might be resources. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's help. Whatever it is to you. But I have um, a new, brand new, free uh, ebook. I want you to get, it's absolutely free. It's, it's written just, um, just wrote it in the last I think in the last six weeks or so, it's fresh from heaven. Five steps to open the heavens over your finances. And I'm giving it away totally free. And you'll give you the tools to get the finances to flow, give you some prayers to work things through. DougAddison.com forward slash five steps or click on the link below and pick it up because, wow, it's going to be so, so powerful when we start flowing, getting the heavens opened over your life. You could also go uh, donate to us, dougaddison.com forward slash give. We got lots of different ways that you can help partner with us uh, and um, you can become a partner. That's anyone who donates on a monthly basis and we send out a mentoring video each month. I put you on my prayer list. Uh, you know, I pray over the partners and I, I also uh, have, we also have a, a partner portal and a coach a partner coach who 
who uh, helps us, you know, helps people uh, who, you know, if you need a place of community, some people even see our partner Facebook group as, as church to them. And we do some support for you as much as we can, but you can do that. Remember the Doug Addison app as well. And I'm going to do some Q and A. Uh, we do this at the end of every uh, broadcast. Uh, I've got some questions. Here's one. <laughs> Why do you talk about Passover and Jewish holidays? Isn't that Old Testament? Uh, well, it is a reflection of the new. And if you notice something, that Jesus himself, he celebrated Passover. Uh, and that's when the resurrection came. And, and actually, the Apostle Paul and uh, they were, they were of course, Jewish. I don't actually do the holidays. I don't celebrate them. You know, I don't uh, eat the food and, and I don't, um, you know, do anything that's, that, that's, uh, I might blow my mighty shofar on an app. You know, I have a mighty shofar app on my iPad. But I want to say this, is that, yeah, I don't, I don't want to uh, be legalistic. I don't, I, you know, we're set free. We're under the law, uh, outside of the law. We're now set free from the law, and we're in the new covenant. However, God still moves on this timetable, and Israel's very important right now, especially. You know, pray for Israel. Get in line with what, what God's doing. But if you get in line with heaven, the Jewish holidays really make sense. And Passover, like I explained before, is one of them where you can get eight days of strategy. You can do it any time. Another one that's going to be powerful is Pentecost coming in 50 days. And then Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur um, is more in September, October, depending on the um, when it falls for the Jewish um, calendar. So that's why I do it. It's not Old Testament, actually. It's fulfilling. It's just agreeing with the Lord. Now, God is on all kinds of calendars. He could be on your calendar. I use the regular Gregorian calendar as well as the Jewish calendar and if you start aligning yourself to just to listen or even make yourself available, you'll see a change. I'm telling you, I found out years ago about that. All right, here's another question. You mentioned the wind of change. Now, I release this as a prophetic word uh, last month that the wind of change is coming. It's not winds of change. It's the wind of change. Uh, the question is, are there any updates? Yes. Oh, my goodness. The wind of change is blowing right now, and that's what's bringing a lot of the revelation that you're getting. It's an angel that comes this time every year, brings like a like a straight line wind. You know, it's not a swirling, it's not a storm, it's a wind of the Lord. It's an angel that comes and rearranges things, and you're going to see people moving. This is not for everybody. You don't have to move. We're going to see people changing jobs, moving getting new revelations, getting new friends. There's going to be some things shifting around. But especially this year, the Lord says that he's blowing away discouragement, hopelessness, lost dreams. Let's go read my prophetic word for last month, for the month of, of March, and you'll see what he's doing with the wind of change. I saw, in fact, when I was traveling from Los Angeles back, uh, I went to, to uh, Apopka, Florida, and then I went uh, to Moravian Falls, North Carolina, where we did some work in the spirit and prayed. And then I went from there. Linda and I went to Asheville, North Carolina. And when we arrived, this is just a few days ago, it was during Passover still. We were just visiting some friends. We arrived. A wind hit. I'm telling you, a straight line wind. There was no storm. There was no rain clouds. A wind hit and knocked the power out. And I knew it was the wind to change coming. And then I was able to get the revelation over that city to be able to release something in the spiritual realm. So the wind of change is blowing right now. You don't have to move. In fact, I recommend don't do anything on your own based on this. You will want to come into line with, with the Lord on and get, in other words, get confirmation, make sure those types of things. But the wind of change is still blowing. You're going to see some amazing things happen. Okay, here's another question. I'm, I'm really not able to hear God. What can I do to start hearing God? Well, this is a good question because uh, some people don't hear the voice of God. And <clears throat> I just want to say that God speaks all the time. 
Have you ever been in the store and you, you know, the grocery store, you felt like you should have been in the other line and it went faster, right? Or you, you have a sense about someone, you remember someone or had it, you know, suddenly you hear from them. Those are the lower levels of hearing God, but you can actually begin to hear God at a deeper level right now. And uh, you could, I think that most people are already hearing God, but they call it a coincidence. I want to just release this over you. Anyone who hasn't not been able to hear the voice of God, or maybe you are and you don't know, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would speak in a special way, especially through the Bible. Ask Him to give you a word. I remember when I came back to the Lord, when I first came to Jesus for the third time in 1988, I asked the Lord for a word and my Bible opened. I heard, no, actually, I heard Isaiah 61. And I opened it because it was it's now my life first. He spoke to me, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you because He's anointed you to preach the good news to the poor. Goes on from there. It was Jesus's as well in Luke 4, 18. And if you don't know what it is or you know, know what to do, just do what some of it that Jesus did. And right now there's just power in hearing God. I have a free training that might help you. It's called How to Know If You're Hearing God. It's absolutely free. It's 45 minute online. Uh, video training and I unpack the things give you the things that you need to get going just go to dougaddison.com forward slash how to know and that I'm not trying to sell anything because here we go that's free right it's a free online training I want everyone give it to your friends I really want to get this out there as much as possible here's another question I have prophecies over my life about the Joseph anointing what can I do to activate it well I just, again, these are free resources, but wow, just so happens I just released today my new free ebook called Five Steps to Open the Heavens Over Your Finances. This is how these things in here will help you to activate the Joseph anointing. And also uh, in my book, uh, I think it was uh, The Prophetic Forecast, Volume 3, I have a chapter on the Joseph anointing. And you can pick that up online, you know, you can download it now. And I have a chapter on the finances that I saw a heavenly encounter last year, two years ago actually, of the Joseph anointing people being in like a prison or a jail. Because Joseph was in a prison that he gets released and he's able to go out. And uh, it took him uh, going out from that prison before he could get released into his new time. This is important to understand that sometimes it's like me. I'm going through this new time right now. I have the Joseph anointing. I've prophesied millions that's manifested into other people's lives. And it's a miracle. My miracle that I've needed is to live where I live. And I live in Los Angeles, not on outskirts, not, you know, I live uh, on the west side of Los Angeles. The Lord told me he wanted me to move here, my wife and I. We moved here. And on paper, we can't afford it, but we get a miracle every, 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 all the time. The miracle for us to be here, we don't own, we rent because God's about to open something right now. But I'm just saying that I have a Joseph anointing and I went into a time of being like in a prison. And uh, there's God is about to release something new over finances, financial strategies. Maybe you need, uh, you know, a strategy to do something new or like us. We're in a project. He wanted us to open the holly, uh, open the, heavens over Hollywood. It took four years to be able to do what we do here. And now things are happening behind the scenes, prophesying into the, um, uh, into the industry of uh, the uh, media, music, and the arts and entertainment industries. And things are going on behind the scenes. God's about to do something new. That all came from opening the heavens over my finances and doing that. And uh, it's not like I arrived or anything, but things are about to shift. I'm telling you, there's a hundredfold coming for those who have been pressing in, pressing in, pressing in. And this is the time right now, like never before to receive that blessing and that anointing from the Lord. Here's another question. Uh, what if I'm not a seer or a prophet? How do I do these things? How do I know that they're really happening? Well, that's a good question because you don't have to be. You know, these things that I've been mentioning are written in the Bible. And 
anything that's in the Bible here is available to you. And it's really important that you come into agreement or alignment with God's Word. And there are things that, that are happening, like an example, you have access to all the gifts. All of us do through the Holy Spirit. We know this because Jesus did, right? He had access uh, through all the gifts. We tend to have had some training over the last, I don't know how long, uh, the years that I've raised, been raised up uh, that look for that one gift because it's in 1 Corinthians 12, you know, they look for your gift. But Jesus, the Apostle Paul, all the ones in the Bible, they tend to operate in all the gifts. So we, you might have a gift that you might operate uh, one over another, but you have access, just like I have access to teaching. I have access to administration when I need it. I have ask, access to all the gifts. I tend to operate in the prophetic and evangelism more than any gifts. But you don't have to be a seer. In fact, you can see and sense what God's doing right now. And it's at different places, different places of maturity, different places of gifting. But receive this word right now. The Lord is opening things up over you. And he wants to bring a blessing to you. And I want to just open that. You don't have to be a prophet. You don't have to be a seer with what he's doing. The books of heaven are opening over you right now. And all you have to do is receive it by faith. And then watch, because a lot of times nothing happens right away. When I go through those doors, I there's some days I would tell you I feel dry as a bone when I'm going through. In fact, I think the day that that, that Revelation 3 door, you know, I was went through it, and the day that the ISAB was there on the Revelation 3.18 happened, that was a dry day. I mean, I wasn't having any uh, super duper spiritual encounter, or feeling super spiritual. I was under attack, and then suddenly, wow, I was given by faith. I received by faith the salve. And it doesn't matter how you feel. What matters is that the Lord's word is true. It will work for you. Here's the last question before we go. Uh, as you were doing these exercises about opening the doors in the spirit, I didn't see anything at all. Well, that's actually common. In fact, I don't always either. I don't see what's going on. Sometimes, most of the time, you receive it by faith. And when you receive it by faith, it might come later. It's like a creeper anointing, if you know what I'm saying. It sneaks up on you later on, like every single day, maybe a couple times. I, I sometimes do it twice a day. I walk through those doors early morning, and then I do it again about 4.30 when I'm having tea with the Lord. You know, I'm having just another quiet time with the Lord around 4.30 in the afternoon. And the uh, I just walk through those doors again as needed. And I tell you, the solutions, the answers, they come in dreams. They start to, to seep in, in different things. They come, they might not happen right there, right then and now. Don't be discouraged. Keep trying it and watch as God opens the doors for you. It's going to be an exciting time. Lord, I pray right now for the by the power and blood of Jesus that you would open all these things. Open our eyes to see. I pray for the eye salve. I pray for the ability to discern the spirit. I pray for the spirit of wisdom. I pray that you would speak to us by the power and blood of Jesus Christ. I pray for healing right now. In fact, I felt strongly there's some people about to you need to just come back to the Lord and uh, that you had a, a, a something going on earlier in your life and maybe you got wounded, but the Lord's calling you back right now. So I just want to say this, you know, just receive Jesus. Maybe you never have. And this is a season right now. All you have to do is say, Lord, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I turn my life over to you in Jesus' name. Speak to me and he will do it. Ask for the Holy Spirit to come and stay connected. I want to encourage you. DougAddison.com is my website. And uh, I'm just really excited for what's coming. See you soon.